Hi, I'm G. Welcome back to my art channel. And in this video, I'm showing you how you can paint a daisy using watercolors. So after drawing the flower out, I've got the reference photo on my phone right next to me. And if you want to have a go at this yourself, then I will pop a link to this photo in the description below. And to keep it simple, I'm just using two colors for the background, Windsor Yellow and the Windsor Blue Green Shade. And I blend those two together and get myself a nice reservoir in my palette of a medium green color. Now I usually work from left to right and from top to bottom, but the stalk of the daisy in this picture gave me a really good place where I could start and then work around the background in an anti-clockwise fashion. And that's just what you can see me doing here as I start. I start using that green paint that I've mixed that is in the palette, a mid-green made of a combination of the Windsor Yellow and the Windsor Blue Green Shade. So I just pop that on, lots of water. Where I needed it to be darker, what you can see me doing is putting some Windsor Blue in at the very sort of point where the sort of white petals meet, because I want it to be darker around the petals and then gradually get lighter towards the edges. And you can see me using very fluid watercolor here, very watery, um, so that the colors as I put them on will sort of run together and blend together in their own kind of way. Yes, I can manipulate them a bit with the brush and move them a little bit, but I'm relying on the fact that when I put on the green or the blue or even a big sort of burst of yellow, then they're going to run together a little bit and blend together anyway without me having to manipulate them too much. So like I said, the idea is that it will be darker around the petals, which are going to be very, very white, and then it will get lighter towards the very edge, where you can see I've put some washi tape down, and the washi tape is just there to uh, mask the edges of this picture so I don't get all big splodges on the edge, and it will give me a nice, crisp, straight kind of edge. Now the background is all about big bodies of color. I don't want to put in too much detail. I don't want to have anything that's going to take away from the daisy. So I can use this big brush for this and you can see that I'm using a size six uh, sable head brush here and it holds a lot of pigment. It holds a lot of water and fluid and I can put that on and manipulate these bits around without me worrying too much and getting too fussy. As you can see me putting in some more of that Windsor blue green shade here and then just gradually blending it into the green that's already there. But if you look ahead to the rest of the drawing, you can see there are some very, very fine areas that I'm going to have to work in between the petals. So a size six brush won't do. So here you can see me flip to a size three round brush. So I've kind of halved the brush size here so I can get in those very, very sort of small, thin gaps in between some of these petals. Sure, some of the petals are overlapping, but some you can see that little tiny gap as you see me just drop in a little bit of the dark blue and blend it into the green. So I'm getting a kind of bluey green in between those two petals. And that's why I've got those two brushes that I'm using here, the size three for the finer details and the size six for the bigger bodies of color in the sort of large areas of background. And next up, you get to see what happens when you haven't mixed enough color to get all the way around. I was going to run out of color and I didn't want a drying line. So what you can see me doing here is adding clean water to the edge of where my color is and working that clean water back and forth, back and forth into the color. And I do that again and again so that that color fades out and I don't get a super strong drying line. And next up, you get to see an accident that can happen to any one of us when we're painting and painting. So everything's going okay. And then, ah. yeah, I drop the brush, but it can be dealt with quickly. Clean water on that brush, onto the background, and just blending it all in super, super quick. And if you can't do that, blot it as quickly as possible with any bits of tissue that you might have lying around. Now you can see me working around this smaller daisy in the background, and the color that I'm putting around that is not as dark as the color that I'm putting around the main daisy, the big daisy in the foreground, because I want that to be the focus. That's where I'm going for the most uh, contrast. So the big daisy has got stronger, darker colors around it to contrast against what are gonna be mainly white petals. The smaller one in the background, not quite so dark around the edges of that. And you can see me now working my way around, having gone anti-clockwise all the way. I'm about to finish by mixing up the last bits of these paints in the background against this stalk that is coming down uh, from the center of the daisy. Now the color looks really bright now while it's wet before it's dried, but when it's dried, you can see it's a lot paler and it wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be. So I knew I had to go in and put a second layer on the background. 
So what you can see me doing here is going back in with exactly the same colors as I've had before, that medium green, and then I'm putting darker bits in with the Windsor blue green shade and lighter areas in with a little bit of the Windsor yellow just to give it a bit more kind of rich color in the background. And that's what I'm looking for with this second layer. I'm putting on the paint more and there's more pigment in there and perhaps a little bit less water this time around so that it's going to be darker but also more colorful in the background. This also gives me that chance to use more of that Windsor Blue in those little fine areas in between the petals where I want it to be really dark, really make those petals sing and stand out with a nice sort of strong contrast. And at this point, I mix up a mix of a lot of the Windsor Blue Green shade, a tiny bit of yellow in there as well. And I put that on to be the nice sort of dark bluey green uh, of the stalks of each of the two daisies. So the background still looks a little bit flat and not dark enough in color. So I come up with a low tech solution, good old fashioned bubble wrap. So if you've not used bubble wrap with watercolor before, it's basically a sponge. What I've got in my palette is a nice reservoir full of a dark green color that I've mixed and I'm dabbing the bubble wrap into that, maybe dabbing it on the edge of my paper just to get the worst off. And then I'm dabbing it onto the painting to give this kind of broken scruffy kind of dotted kind of texture in the background to give the feel of it's possibly being foliage or leaves in the background. And it just breaks that background up and gives it a different kind of texture. I could have probably used one of those little kind of yellow sponges for this, but I do find when I'm using those that I get a very fine smattering of dots in the background, but I don't get a real kind of big chunky blobs of color as well. Now, because of bubble wrap being the way that it is, you usually get a combo. You get a combination of some big fat marks of color and you get some finer bits of color as well. Uh, so that's why I sometimes go for the bubble wrap rather than the slightly um, you know, nicer, more expensive sponge. And if you haven't got a sponge, then here you go. You can use bubble wrap as a basic kind of sponge to give your painting a bit of texture in the background. And as I do this, I'm trying to do some little bits at the top, but I'm going for most of my color and most of my dabbing around the bottom, around the base, where I want it to be darker and I want there to be more kind of shapes in that background. And I'm just having to be very careful as I use it because I want to put in some bits, but I don't want to dab over my daisy petals, which of course I haven't masked and those are just plain paper at the moment. So now I peel the washi tape off the background and start mixing the color that's going to be on the petals. And for this, I use the Windsor Blue with a little bit of Payne's Gray mixed in. And again, I mix it into a little reservoir in my palette so it's there ready to go. So you can see there, I've done a little test a bit, first of all, and this kind of blue gray that I've got working here is nice. I've diluted it quite a bit and it is a very subtle color to put onto these uh, white petals to show that there is some shadow on them, which will give them a little bit of extra 3D, but also show that some of the petals of that smaller daisy in the background are casting a shadow across the petals of this larger leaf in the foreground. So I'm using the size three brush here for this because these are slightly more delicate and smaller areas to work in. And when I'm putting on the, the color straight from the palette, I'm then going to the water jar next to me, getting some clean water on the brush, coming back in and putting that clean water on and then using that to kind of blend the color out from its kind of like some more saturated kind of color to a much fainter, almost white kind of paper. So that's what you can see me doing all the way around. I put on the color neat from the palette and then I start using just plain clean water to gently blend out that color so that this, the leaves stay nice and subtle. I'm not going too dark and I'm trying to keep them as white as possible so that we get that nice contrast with the background colors. You might be able to see me just using the end of my rubber just to rub out some pencil lines on these petals before I paint. And that's just what I'm doing, trying to get rid of any pencil lines that I can. So it's just all about one color meeting the other color and you get that contrast between the two. Now, I decided that they weren't quite dark enough. So I went in with a second layer and I'm using exactly the same uh, blend in my palette of the Windsor Blue and the Payne's Grey together. I mixed enough so that when I'd done the first pass all on those petals, I could then go back to the start and start working on them again with a second layer. And it's exactly the same approach. I'm putting on the paint from the palette and then using clean water to just gradually and carefully blend away that strong color into much, much fainter, much paler color, almost the paper white. 
Now, I have to be careful because there are some areas that just want a nice, clean, crisp edge shadow falling across them. So I don't want to blend everything out with clean water. On some of these places where there's a shadow across the petals, I'm going to put the color on and I'm going to streak it across or brush it across the petal and I'm not going to blend it. So it's still got that crisp edge like a shadow. Now you might be looking at this and thinking that first pass of colour that he did all the way around on every single petal looks fine, it looks good, it's subtle, there's a lot of the white petals still showing through and you could be right, this is just personal preference, personal choice. When I was looking at them they looked as they didn't have enough definition and didn't have enough shadow on them. So that's the reason I decided to go through and add a second layer of the, the Windsor Blue and the Payne's Grey mix across them. I just wanted them to have a little bit more contrast between the light areas and the the dark areas. When it came to the one in the background, I wanted that one to stay in the background. So I used the same mixture, but I was determined that I wasn't as much as possible going to do a second layer. I mean, there are a couple of bits here where you see me put on just an extra little bit of color there, but I wanted it to just be a single layer. And then after having done that, uh, yeah, I just couldn't stop messing with it. I had to go and put a third layer of slightly darker mix of those two colors onto the rest of the petals. And maybe that was a bit too far. I don't know. But I again, I wanted that contrast. And that was my real reason for doing it. Now you can see me doing the centers of the, the lovely yellow centers of the daisies. So here I'm just putting on a nice wash of very, very wet yellow paint. And then looking at the reference photo, the very sort of top arch of it had this slight green tinge to it. So I mixed a light green and just dabbed that in with the size three brush. Didn't mess with it. Let it run together. Now you can see me doing the big one here in the center. So again, it's exactly the same mix of yellow. I've got winter yellow on there and I'm slapping that on and moving that around with lots of water. So it's very, very um, wet, very saturated. And there's a reason for that because once I've got that lovely saturated yellow running in the center, I'm going to put on a little bit of secondary shadow using a very, very sort of pale green that I've got mixed in the palette. So I just dab it on and I'm just dabbing it in. Um, it's not flooding everywhere. It's just kind of going where I want to, which is a sort of like a, a crescent kind of curve of shadow that's going around from the bottom up around to the top right of the, the center of the daisy. And it's really not moving around too much. I'm not putting on too much. It's not totally sodden with water, so it doesn't run everywhere. I've got a little bit of control. And now I turn to Burnt Sienna to make that green a little bit darker. I want to use that green to just sort of dab on, stipple some little bits of color on here and have a dark shadow on the side of the daisy. I didn't want to resort to using the Windsor Blue here because I wanted to use something to add a slightly warmer, browner tone to it because the background is very, very green. The petals have got blue uh, on them. So I wanted this to have a slightly more earthy quality, which is why I started using the Burnt Sienna. And you can see me just stipple it on. I'm really just dabbing little dots on with the brush. Uh, and that's partly because I want to give the center texture. The center of the daisy has got this kind of little kind of seedy, polleny type of texture. And I thought the best way to achieve that would be to dab the paint on using this technique that's called stippling. Now that color looked good and also the texture looked really good but I was looking at it after it had dried and I thought again it doesn't quite look dark enough so I mixed up a bit more burnt sienna and you can see this is my very last layer that I decide to just stipple onto the center of the daisy. And now you can see the reference photo and the painting side by side. Uh, I'm really pleased with how the painting on the right hand side came out. It looks quite expressive, looks different. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to follow me on all those social media where I go by the name of G Massam Art. And just to let you know that the description below contains Amazon affiliate links. Thanks for watching.